Well, she becomes the first female deputy speaker to be elected in the National Assembly. Joining us in studio to tell us a little bit about uh, what to expect ahead of tomorrow is Dr. Joyce Laboso. Thank you so much for talking to us tonight. Thank, thank you. So it's a first. You're the first female. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's going through your mind ahead of tomorrow. I think it's quite exciting. It's um, um, quite daunting at the same time mm -hmm. because, as you've seen, we've got a very large house, you know. 349 members and then of course tomorrow we'll have the senators as well mm -hmm. uh, but tomorrow the main function will really be about the president giving his uh, legislative agenda right. so I'm um, you know not likely to be working tomorrow but at least from tomorrow then they will have opened parliament and you know from there on now then we can the real work begins exactly yes. it's a male dominated <coughs> assembly that's uh, safe to say yes. Do you think that's going to be one of the major hurdles with regards to the role that you will be playing? Um, I don't think so because it's really not the first time I'm doing it. Um, I did it in the 10th parliament and of course uh, this time round I even have a bigger number of, uh, of female MPs. You mm -hmm. know, at least uh, it's not like when we were just about 22 in the last parliament. This time we, are, we have at least another 69. So it's not th that feeling of feeling like you're, you know, all alone. It's, no, it's, it's going to be less this time round. Mm -hmm. yeah. You seem relatively confident uh, ahead of, of this new role. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how you want to play a role with regards to managing inter-party politics within the National Assembly. I think really the Speaker's role is to moderate debate, to ensure that there is order in the House, um, and generally to, to, to maintain order and ensure that business is achieved in the house. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I think I also have the added advantage that um, well, I was there in the last parliament, so I know quite a few members. I know the turnout is maybe, maybe only about 30% uh, of the members are old, both in the, in, in the minority as well as in the majority party. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I, I believe that it's not going to be that difficult because uh, I've done it before and mm -hmm. uh, at the same time it's you follow the rules it's about uh, you know maintaining order it's about making sure that the leaders uh, and the and the um, and the members of parliament mm -hmm. have confidence in you and they can see that you're fair that you're not biased that you, you know you're taking control and giving um, members a chance you know e e you know, m trying as much as possible to balance out mm -hmm. who, whom you're giving um, uh, chances to speak. It's going to be quite a, a challenge because, as you can see, trying to get 349, if all of them want to speak, may be quite a challenge. Trying to yes. manage that as and well. Manage that, I yes. want to talk a little bit about your own personal journey. Um, politics really wasn't in the cards for you probably a decade ago, and I stand to be corrected. Mm -hmm. How have you then seemingly, seamlessly adapted to the world of politics. Tell us a little bit about your journey from before uh, politics and how you find yourself here today. Okay, I think um, um, I was a, um, a, a university lecturer. I, I was teaching at Edgerton University in the Department of Languages. And um, so from uh, after the tragedy, after my sister uh, and uh, Kipkalia Kones' um, tragic plane crash, and, um, and then the co when the community asked me if I really wanted to uh, not really. Uh, they didn't really give me much choice. They were like, we had already decided that uh, we had given this seat um, to this family, and we don't really feel like want to to stop it at the at this point. Mm -hmm. Of course, at first I resisted because it. I didn't think it was my cup of tea, and I didn't think it was what I really wanted to to be doing with my life. But um, you know, once once I had. Uh, you know, sort of agreed and, and said, okay, I'll give it a try. I really didn't think, I, um, as I've said before, that I would go beyond the nomination then. I thought if I really did go up to the nomination, everybody would be happy. I'd have felt, I would have, my conscience would be clear that I tried. And, th and then, you know, everybody else would have also felt at least I, I made the effort. Right. So, and then, um, you know, without, uh, re uh, un you know, belief or, or <laughs> couldn't believe it when I actually did turn out that I had, um, I won the nomination. So from there, mm -hmm. when I came then to, uh, then I really put my heart into it and decided, okay, if I've won this, then I'm really going, I'm not going to let it go now. I must really work and make sure I get the seat. And so that's what I did. I put my all and um, got elected uh, as the member of parliament. And then, you know, from there really came into parliament and um, 
I think the way I do things is when I really decide I want to do something, then I don't do it have I don't give it half measures. I, I make sure that I give it my best. And um, I, I also believe that uh, the things in life don't just happen by chance, all of them. Mm -hmm. There is a reason, there is a path that has been uh, charted, you know, it, it, it's well been charted out before. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I believe really in God and I believe that um, most of our lives are already sort of in a, there's already a page for you there mm -hmm. and it is very clearly marked out. So it's almost like <laughs> this found you. It's a, it's a it's calling yes. that almost found, found you. You didn't necessarily yes. find it. Yeah, and I now you're embracing it. it. And, and now once I've, uh, I've embraced it and I move on and it's like, you know, okay, even this position of, of, of speakership, you mm -hmm. know, it's, uh, I, I got back into parliament because then I was re quite excited about the kind of things that you can do. It's a life that you really never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So there's quite some excitement mm -hmm. about that, you know, the unknown and, and all the time having new challenges, different challenges. Right. So, okay, I decided this is, this I could do this. And, and uh, is, <laughs> this, is this the pinnacle? For you, do you see yourself perhaps pursuing other interests um, <laughs> in government maybe in another five years, do you think? Um, for now, mm -hmm. this is what I, I I'm, I'm happy doing this uh, and I'm sure I'll get a, to learn, I'll get to get a, a very useful experience. Where I'm going next, I told you it's a page which I'm sure uh, something will be revealed along the way, mm -hmm. but I assure you, I'm still, I, I think I've only just started. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Dr. Joyce Laboso, thank you so yes. much for talking to us. We yes. obviously look forward to seeing the work you'll be doing uh, in Parliament, and we hopefully we'll talk to you once thank again. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much.